So what I thought I'd do today is we're gonna make some candles. Utilize what we have at camp here, or what I have at camp. I've got a bag full of deer fat that I've taken off an, an animal a while ago. We're gonna render that down and make some candles. Right, so what we have here, this is one I made up last night, just out of a tin. I think it was a tin of baked beans or something, whatever, not important. It's just a tin I've cut and yeah, put a wick in it. We'll explain about the wick soon, but yeah, this is rendered down deer fat. Okay, so this stuff into that. So just quickly, I'll explain the difference between lard and tallow. This is tallow, so this is deer fat compared to say like a pig fat or a lamb fat. Deer fat or tallow will take a higher temperature for that to actually turn to more of a liquid state, okay? And it makes, you know, an ideal material or or substance to use for candles because it's, you know, it's hard, okay? Lard, on the other hand, will be, takes a less of a heat for it to turn to liquid, okay? Uh, basically at room temperature, lard will be very soft, okay? It won't be very conducive for making candles, okay? But it definitely has its uses for other stuff, such as slush lamps, okay? So this is a clay slush lamp that I've made up. You know, this would be filled in here with, with lard. And then our wick runs through this part here and soaks up all that lard and you light it and it will just stay lit for quite a while. <coughs> also, you can use it for your leather products and your tools and stuff like that. So, how do we turn this chunk of fat bits of meat and crap into something like this, okay? Well, first of all, we need to chop it up into manageable sizes, into little little bits that will render down. We're gonna render this fat down and get all the impurities out of it and strain it. And there, after that, that lard, uh, tallow will last for a long, long time. So now just dicing these up just fat into smaller chunks so they render down a bit quicker a bit easier we couldn't live off deer rabbit kangaroo you know by itself we'd end up still just losing condition okay because that meat is so lean so being able to store that fat for consumption whether it be cooking or or whatever is vitally important to know how to do Start putting it in to our billy, our pot. Already from just handling the fat, yeah, I'm starting to coat my knife handle. So that's where we are, fellas. So we've got all our meat chunks, uh, sorry, our fat chunks diced up. Now we'll put it on our fire. Now you don't want a raging inferno, it'll be a candle. So that's just a bit of tin again, tin can from like Spam, okay. Now this, I saw something similar in a museum, in the Eureka Stockade Museum in Ballarat. There was a cup there full of, I'm tipping it was animal fat with a little wick inside of it. So I want to replicate that, the one that I saw in that museum. So yeah, I think this will fit the bill quite nicely. You can use glass jars, work really well. Um, and, you know, obviously being glass, they're see-through, so the light will protrude a lot more being glass. These days, you know, we flick a light switch on and we don't think anything about it, do we? Okay, around camp, we've got these beautiful, you know, LED lights and head torches and stuff like that, which are great. And you know, don't get me wrong, I might use them. However, back in the old days, stuff like that didn't exist. So I'll talk about wicks now. And what can we improvise out here and use that we have with us? Okay, well, 
straight away we've got some natural fibre cordage. Okay, don't we? This is just some uh, rope, natural fibre rope, which would work quite well. This is like a jute twine. That'll be sufficient as well. With your jute twine though, it can be a little bit thin. So what I like to do is I just twist it up, okay? These candles aren't going to be like your store-bought candles, okay? This is just purely improvisation. We just start to pour our fat into our candle. And our bit of material will filter out any particles like that stuff there, okay? I need the fire. And now we're pretty full there. So, take my gloves off for this part. <coughs> I've got my wick, and I'll centralise my wick best I can. And then, once it's set, I just trim this part off, and then, yeah, our wick is right to go. Like that. Even that will be sufficient to set it. But if you needed to, <coughs> you could grab another two and just rest them up against the wick, like so. And that'll just help support it and keep it in place for you. So, here we go, we've got our candles set out on our table here. This is the first one we made up last night. So that's just a bit of tin with a little wire handle. Spam can. Sometimes with these improvised wicks, they can take a little while just to, to start up, particularly the first time. And I've got another one here. Made out of a baked bean can that I've cut and opened it up. And I didn't have enough um, fat, so I've used beeswax, okay? I've got a chunk of beeswax with me. This is beeswax candle now. So we'll light that one up in a minute. So there we have some Bushman candles. There we have a candle lit dinner tonight. <laughs> So this one here is that clay grease lamp that I was talking about and using you know, a little bit of rope as our wick, okay? I've got a little bit of oil in this clay pot and that wick is wicking that oil up and keeping it alight, okay? So that's our grease lamp. So you're probably wondering, does it smell? No, it doesn't. The only smell, it only smells like a normal candle, okay, like a waxy type of smell. There's no animal like stink or anything, okay, so don't be worried about it. It's going to stink the house out or your tent or whatever, whatever you're staying in. There's no smell. 
Well, that's about it anyway. So I hope you like this video. It's just, yeah, another way to use resources. Okay, so yeah, and as you can see, they're working really well. Nice atmosphere. And uh, yeah, nah, it's all good. So yeah, that's about it. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, whenever that may be. Cheers.